Hi, my name is Bohadar Akhmedov. Welcome to the course of Probability and Statistics. In this lecture, we're going to continue our discussions on hypothesis testing, and in particular, we're going to solve a problem on testing the hypothesis about the population proportion, and we're going to solve another problem on testing the hypothesis on the population variance. So before we do this, we're going to briefly talk about the steps which we need to perform in order to construct the hypothesis test. If you're given a claim, we need to write this down mathematically. We need to state what is the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. Then we have to take a sample and calculate the test statistic. Then we'll have to identify the test type and find the p-value. So last time we've seen that we actually can skip the step number three using so-called rejection regions. We can just calculate the test statistic from the second step and just put this onto the rejection region or not to the rejection region. So in a step number four, we need to decide whether the, the test statistic is in the rejection region or not, or basically the p-value is greater than the level of significance or not. And depending on that, we are going to make a conclusion about the claim. So if the claim is a null hypothesis, and if the null, if the, uh, null hypothesis is rejected, then we're going to reject the claim. And if the claim is alternative hypothesis, we're going to support this. And it's going to be vice versa. If the null hypothesis is not rejected from the previous steps, we are not going to reject this, the claim, the claim itself, if it is the null hypothesis. And we're not going to support the claim if the claim is the alternative hypothesis. So the main problem, again, is how to define the test statistics. So for the proportion, there is another formula rather than the population mean. So for the proportions, we're going to use this formula in order to, to define the test statistic. So if we are given the so here, P is going to be the population proportion which is used in the, in the claim. P hat is the samples proportion. Basically, we're going to choose a sample, calculate the proportion of the sample, and we're going to denote this as the P hat. And here on the, de, uh, on the denominator, we are going to use the P and Q where P is going to be again the proportion of the population which is used in the, in the claim and Q is going to be one minus P. N is the sample size. So we are going to check whether this test statistic is in the rejection region, in this red region or not. We are going to solve a problem. So before we solve the problem, it should, con it should satisfy some conditions. So, so in order to be able to use the standard normal distribution, so we need to make sure that our population have the normal distribution. And whenever we are going to test the proportions for this, um, we, can, we can check these two conditions. Basically the N, which is the sample size, times the P, the population proportion should be greater than five. And uh, N times Q, which is one minus P, should be also greater than five. So this will make sure that our population is going to have roughly the normal distribution, which enables us to use the Z table in order to, to define the critical regions. So let's solve a problem. The state's small college claims that more than 94% of their graduates find an employment within six months after their graduation. We are going to check this claim. So in order to test this claim, what we did is we took a sample of 500 graduates and counted how many of them found a job within six months. And it appears 475 of them found a job within, uh, within six months. And now we need to test the claim of the college at the level of significance 5%. So again, uh, we need to perform the five steps in order to do this, or a couple of steps. But the steps are, again, more or less general for all types of the tests. So here, the claim tells us that more than 94%, right? So the population proportion P should be more than 0 0.94. This is our claim, right? And what kind of hypothesis is it? Is it the null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis? So well, in order to know this, we need to look to the sign. So if you don't see equality sign, it means that this is the alternative hypothesis. So well, this is the alternative hypothesis. And actually, this is our claim. So at the end, we have to make an, a, a conclusion about the alternative hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is going to be the complement, right? It's, it's going to be basically opposite of this. That means that a P is going to be smaller and equal to the 0 0.94. In a step number two, we have to calculate the test statistic, actually. So the test statistic is calculated as P hat 
minus p divided to the square root of p q times to the square root of n, right? So again, here p hat can be calculated from a sample. We take a sample of 500 students, a uh, graduates, and 475 of them found a job within six months, right? And what is going to be the proportion of those who found a job? It's going to be 475 divided to 500. So if you divide 475 to the 500, so let me check this. It's going to be 0 0.95. Nice. So I'm going to substitute this to the formula of the test statistic. It's going to be 0 0.95. What's going to be p? p is the proportion of the population, which is used in the claim, which is equal to the 0 0.94. So this is divided to square root of 0 0.94. q is calculated by just subtracting the p from the 1. In this case, it's going to be 0 0.06. And we have to multiply this to the square root of the n, which is the sample size. So in our case, the sample is 500. We have to multiply this to the square root of 500. So if you put everything together on a calculator and calculate this, we are going to get roughly the value 0 0.94. So this is going to be our test statistic, 0 0.94. So what we need to do is now we need to define the rejection region, right? And see whether this value is going to be in the rejection region or not. So in order to define the rejection region, we need to first of all know what type of the test we need to use. In order to do this, we need to look to the sign of the alternative hypothesis. So it has the greater sign. It means that we need to use the right tail, right? And the level of significance is 5%. It means that we need to, the rejection region is going to be an area on the right tail under the standard normal distribution curve, which is equal to the 5%. So let's do this together. So this is the normal distribution uh, table. So we are going to use this table in order to draw and find a rejection region. So since our test is the right tail test, so this area is going to be the rejection region. So the area of this is exactly equal to the 0 0.05, which is the level of significance, right? So what we need to do, basically, we need to find the Z, which corresponds to this. So if you remember, so this table is going to tell you the area which is measured from the left, right? So the area which is measured from the left should be equal to the 0 0.95, right? So if you go to the table, so the closest value to the 0 0.95 is going to be 0 0.9495. So it tells you that this Z value is going to be equal to the 1.64. So here, this value should be 1.64. So if you have the Z, and if the Z is greater than 1.64, then you are going to, your Z is going to be in the rejection region. So this is the critical point. We call this as a critical point. So now onto this map, what we're going to do is we are going to place the test statistic we've just calculated. Our test statistic is here, right? So it's 0 0.94. We've just calculated this. This is at 0. So well, is it in the rejection region, in this like yellow region or not? So, well, this is not in that region, right? So that is why we're not going to reject the null hypothesis. So let's, let's write down our conclusion. So sorry, there is a typo. It should be 5%, 5%. So, so the Z zero is smaller than the Z critical point. It means that H zero is uh, it's not in the critical, in, in the rejection region or test statistic. It means that H0 is not rejected. Okay, so now we have to write down the conclusion. If you remember, our claim actually tells you that the proportion is more than 94%. And actually, our claim is the alternative hypothesis. And if you are not going to reject the null hypothesis, we're not going to support the alternative hypothesis, right? So they are the complements. So not rejecting the null hypothesis means the null hypothesis is true. It means the alternative hypothesis should be false. So that is why HA is not supported. And if you would like to write down the proper conclusion, you need to write as, hey, at the level of significance, 5%, there is not enough evidence
to support the clay. Well, um, this is how we are going to test the claims about the population interpretation. And our last example is going to be about the testing the claim about the variance. So in order to test the claim about the variance, we, we are going to use the chi-square distribution. And, 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 and okay, so the whole procedure of testing the hypothesis about the variance is going to be very much the same. The only difference is we are going to use basically the different table in order to define the rejection regions um, and that's it. So we need to use the chi-square distribution table in order to find the rejection regions. So we need to find the right rejection region and left rejection region depending on the chi-square distribution. So we're going to do an example on that and try to figure, so if you don't remember how to do this, how to find the critical regions, uh, critical points using the chi-square distribution, hopefully you're going to be able to do this. So now, the, so one more important thing is that we are going to calculate the, the the test statistic using this formula now. So it's basically S score is going to be the variance of a sample, right? They so were testing the hypothesis about the population. In order to do this, we take a sample, we calculate its variance, and sigma square is going to be the variance of the population, which is used in the, in the hypothesis. And N is going to be simply the size of the sample. So let's, let's do an example. A uh, local balloon company claims that the variance for the time its helium balloons will stay afloat is five seconds. A customer would like to check this, so she randomly selects 22 uh, balloons and finds that the variance of a sample is equal to the 4.5 seconds. And we need to test the claim of a company. In order to do this, uh, we need to test the claim at the level of significance want 10 percent actually 0 0.1 is 10 percent so let's do this again the first step is again we need to write down the claim mathematically it tells you that the variance sigma square is exactly equal to the five seconds right is equal to the five seconds so do you see an equality sign yes yeah, so it means that this is the null hypothesis right so this is the null hypothesis and this is actually our claim so at the end, we need to write down the conclusion about the null hypothesis we could use because our claim is the null hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis is going to be its opposite, its, uh, it, its complement, right? So it's going to be sigma square is not equal to the five seconds. Okay, and in step number two, what we need to do is um, we need to find the sample statistic. So the sample statistic is calculated, chi square, Zero is calculated as n minus one times s squared divided to the sigma squared. So the n here is the uh, sample size, which is 22, and s squared is going to be 4.5. So s is the standard deviation, and s squared is the variance. So it's going to be 20, oops, sorry. So, uh, sorry, so it's going to be 21 times 4.5 divided to the 5. So if you calculate this, it's going to be 18.9. So this is our test statistic, 18.9. What we need to do is we need to define whether this is in the rejection region or not. So in order to define the rejection region, what we need to do is we need to look to the sign of the alternative hypothesis, right? So here it is. So the alternative hypothesis sign is not equal. It means that we are going to, so we are going to have the rejection regions in both of the tails because we need to use the T tail, right? So in order to do this, we need to take the level of significance, 10%, and we have to split this into the T parts. So the area on the right, hand, the right tail should be equal to the 5% and the area on the left tail should be equal to the 5%. Those are going to be our rejection regions. So let's try to draw this. So this is the chi-square distribution table, which we are going to use in order to define the rejection regions. So our chi-square is going to be like skewed normal distribution. We are going to have the rejection region here. So let me write this with a different color. So the chi-square left, and here, it's going to be chi-square right. Okay, so this area should be equal to the 5%, and this area, this also should be equal to the 5%. So what I'm going to use 
this table in order to find these two critical points. And if you remember, this table is going to measure the areas measured from the right, from the right, from the right, from the right, right? So this area is equal to the 0 0.5. Degrees of freedom is going to be the sample size minus one. So our sample has 22 items. So the degrees of freedom is going to be 21. So I'm going to find the 21 here, right? So the first of all, in order to find the right critical point, we need to go to the 0 0.05. So here it is. So the 2.67. So this is going to be our right critical point. So the 2.67. In order to find the left one, we need to know the area which is measured from here until here, right? What kind of area it's going to be? So this area is equal to the 0 0.95. So since the area on the left tail is equal to the 5%, then the area until that, that critical point, is going to be equal to the 0 0.95. So when you go to the table and find 0 0.95 from here, it's going to be 11.591. So the left one is going to be 11.591. So if you remember our critical point, uh, our test statistic, so the x0 in the square, was equal to the 18.9, right? So we need to define where it is located. Is it located in the rejection region or not? So let me draw this again, say one more time. So we found the left critical point. It's going to be equal to the 11. And we found the right critical point, which is going to be, say, the 2 roughly. So this is our rejection region and this is our rejection region. So x0, so the test statistic, is equal to the 18. So it's going to be here. So this is x0 in the square, which is equal to the 18.9. So it is not in the rejection region, right? So it means that the null hypothesis is not rejected. So if you remember, the claim tells you that it is exactly equal to the five, it should be seconds here, seconds. Five seconds exactly. So our claim is a null hypothesis since this our test statistic is not in the rejection region. Null hypothesis is not rejected. So that is why our claim is not rejected as well. So the conclusion should be at the level of significance one percent. There is not enough evidence to reject the claim of a local company. Yeah, of the local company. So this is how we are going to test the claims about the population variance.